I am here today with George Gallo, the writer-director of the new film Vanquish, which is now available on demand and will soon be available in select theaters. Um, welcome, George. How are you doing? I'm doing great. and doing fantastic. Excellent. Um, I don't want to give away any spoilers with this movie. Oh, why not? Because, you know, <laughs> otherwise, why go see it? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. Trailers already do a, a bad enough job of that as it is. The interviews yeah. should keep spoiler free. Yes, yes. Um, so it, I don't want to give away spoilers except to say that this is a unique take on the crooked cop movie. Um, Morgan Freeman's character, Damon, enlists his assistant, Vicky, played by Ruby Rose, to collect money from various mobsters over one very turbulent night. Um, and these are for reasons that appear to change throughout the film. Can you tell me how you and co-writer Samuel Bartlett came up with an idea that feels fresh in a genre that is starting to feel really stale? Yeah, it's interesting that you said that when this, when, when it sort of originally got presented, uh, you know, that we could actually make the film, uh, there's a lot of stuff, uh, you know, we co-wrote the screenplay, but there's still a lot of stuff in the movie that wasn't even in the script, because I kept saying, man, oh man, oh man, I've seen this movie one million times already, you know, and I've seen good versions of it and terrible versions of it. So why don't we try to make the best version we can out of this? Like, I love Korean gangster movies, you know, and, and uh, you know, those movies in a lot of ways, you know, those guys, the people that make those movies, they make them with so much heart and passion. So I kept, you know what? I said, let's treat this like that. So every day we kept thinking, how do we make it different? How could this scene be different? How could we make this a little more interesting? How could we throw it a curve, you know, through acting, through visuals? What could we do? And that's what we tried to do every day, you know, uh, like with the various bad guys that she goes to see, you know, how do we make them different? How do we not make them gangsters, you know? And uh, uh, how do we make their environments look different? You know, uh, there's one, I've said this in a couple other interviews, uh, the cinematographer, he, he's an African-American guy. His name is Akeen. And then the scene where, uh, um, she goes to visit the the, the three uh, gang black gangsters. Uh, you know, we were when we were walking the rehearsals. I was like, "Well, oh, man, I've seen this scene so many times. I mean, what can we do to make this different? What is some of these guys could be watching? You know, that's like different." And Akeen said, "How about curling? That's the last thing three brothers would be watching." And I said, "You know what? That's fantastic. Let's do that." <laughs> so you know, so we always tried to make everything feel different. You know. Well, it sounds like there was a real collaboration there too, like an openness to be, you know, uh, to invite in new ideas to make it feel authentic. Yeah, I, I don't know any other way to make a movie that, that we, like, you know, my approach is always like, which I always loved about Robert Altman, he was asking everybody, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Why don't we try, you know? And, you know, it always seems absurd to me, you know, to put like a, you know, 40, 50, very talented people in a room and then don't listen to any of them. That always made no sense to me. You know, it's like, are you making a movie? Yeah, there's a captain, but at the same time, it's a team. You can't do anything without the other people. So I'm always saying, hey, well, what can we do to change this up, make this a little different? Even with the actors, I do that, you know? I'm like, uh, yeah, I know the script says this and we know what the intent of the scene is. We can't forget what the intent is and that it's part of a bigger whole but what can we do to make this a little different delicious interesting like uh you know is there a secret going on you know what, what, is this something you know that we're not exploring so that that's how i try to do it all the time you know plus i had great actors i mean morgan's fantastic ruby they're, they're both they're wonderful actors and when you get when you allow them to play that's what they're there to do. You know, I, I, I never understand these movie sets where everybody's tense and they're yelling at everybody. I'm like, come on, you're making a movie with it, you know? Were there any um, ideas that you came up with that were too out there, too extreme, something that you tried and it just didn't work? No, no, to be honest with you, you know, all, all the ridiculous ones are in the movie. We tried, all, you know, like one of the things we kept saying, well, I kept saying, I didn't know what city, I didn't want the audience to ever know what city you were in. So we took all the license plates off the cars and everything. I never wanted to, you to know where you were. You know, one cop, Nick Vallelong, is clearly from New York. His partner is clearly from like Alabama. I mean, like one guy is French, you know, another guy said, what, what city am I in? And I kept saying, dad, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just let's make it interesting and weird. And there's no extras anyway. Did you know uh, the streets are empty? Everything yeah. is empty. 
coffee shops are empty. It's just always this. So it felt like high noon all the time, you know? There was nothing to distract you. You had to focus on the main carriage. The producer loved the fact that there were no extras that they don't have to pay, you know, for all the people walking around, you know, but I kept, but for me, it was a stylistic choice. I was like, make it empty, make it like a cold, clinical, bizarre universe, you know? That's what we tried to do. Well, I'm glad it's not me because I felt like I was missing something as far as like, where, where is this? I don't, I don't know what city this is. No, <laughs> no, we kept, well, we absolutely did that on purpose. And we used different cities too. We, I mean, we used, uh, we shot all the principal stuff in Biloxi, but then we shot some stuff in of San Diego. And then we shot, there's a couple of, uh, I think there's one pickup shot that's uh, in Chicago in an alley. That was a, a Getty image. I just kept saying, no, I don't want to know where I am. I don't want, so we never shot palm trees. You know, we just kept it like some alternate place that we're in. Um, now you mentioned that, you know, Ruby and, and Morgan, yeah, they're the stars of the film. Um, but for me, the real discovery or rediscovery was Patrick Muldoon as this sort of sliv slithery mid-level string puller. Um, how much of his character was on the page? How much did he bring to it? Was it a collaboration? Because it was really quite fun to watch. All right. <laughs> Patrick is an old, old friend, okay? So uh, uh, Patrick is also, and I have a movie coming out in June that I shot before that's called The Comeback Trail mm. uh, uh, with Robert De Niro. Right. And uh, Patrick is in that, and he plays the world's biggest movie star who's just a complete asshole. <laughs> you know, so, but Patrick is a buddy. You know, the funny thing about Patrick is he, he plays kind of a, an a-hole better than anybody, you know? And he's not that guy at all. He's just the sweetest, funniest guy. But he, there's something about him where he, he, he can just connect to that very easily. So a lot of it was, the words were on the page, but the inflections were all his. That uh, little thing he was doing, that uh, kind of a way he was talking. No, no, that, was, that was all, yeah, that was all his own doing. The second, you know, it's great because, like, you know, you write these things down. I love actors because, you know, I, I, you write these things and somebody has to perform them and make them real, you know. And then if you, 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 cast, you cast a wonderful actor, you know, to, to, they don't just say the lines, they become the person. And, uh, you know, they start stealing scenes. It's just wonderful to watch. Um, lastly, you've been writing and directing movies for decades. Um... Dinosaurs were ruling the earth when I started, yes. <laughs> Before the moving picture, you were making moving pictures. No. Um, so <laughs> I, I wonder if there was something that you learned on the making of Vanquish that really made you feel the enthusiasm of a first time filmmaker, a technique, a new experience? Well, for me, it was the first time I did kind of a complete, I would say, balls out action movie. You know, a lot of the movies I did were either comedies or, you know, I. I but this was, I mean, I've done movies that had thrills in them, but they were, you know, they always had a comedic bent. Although there is humor in Vanquish, but yeah, I, I, I think that part of, part of making the movie that I learned on this one, it's a good question, was that I, I really let go on this one. You know, the other, the other great thing about it is when you're making a comedy, it's very difficult because in a comedy, you make a contract with an audience that you have to make them laugh like every 20 seconds or suddenly the movie stinks. You know, in a thriller, in a thriller, you, you, you're not bound to that same thing. So as long as you feel tension all the time, you know, uh, that's all you really need. And, and, you know, the threat that something could happen to the daughter really is the tension that was carrying the movie or something could happen to Ruby. You know, uh, but so yeah. I mean, I and and I don't know. I, I on this one, I felt uh, very uh, free to just try anything. You know, and just let people go. Cool. Um, well, so there, your next movies. Uh, what was the what's the name of it again? It's coming the out. The comeback June? trail. Comes comeback out trail. Right. June. It's the movie we made it made just before this. It's coming out, and it's uh, Robert De, De Niro, Tommy Lee Jones, Morgan Freeman. Emil Hirsch, Zach Braff, Eddie Griffin. It's about an insurance scam. It takes place in the 70s. And Robert De Niro plays just the worst bottom feeding movie producer on earth. He, and he, he comes up with a scam to heavily insure Tommy Lee Jones, an aging Western movie star, and try to kill him in a stunt. 
so that he can collect the insurance money. He has no intention of finishing the movie, but they can't kill Tommy Lee Jones. They just, he survives every horrible stunt. So they have to keep upping the stunts and trying to get him you know, gored by a cow or throw him down a ravine, set fire to him. He keeps surviving everything. It, it's a very funny movie. Oh, I got to check it out, man. Well, thank you very much thank for you. talking about uh, Vanquish with me. This has been a lot of, a lot of fun. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank Good you. Good luck, very man. Much. Take care. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye.